Hello, good morning, everyone. Welcome, this is Devoted Heart Lauren with the Monday Awareness Upgrade. My topic for today is opening your heart to suffering while remaining whole. So this is inspired by a Ramdas talk that I listened to at some point. I believe it's called The Roots of Suffering. I think you can find it on Spotify, um, the Ramdas Here and Now podcast. So he talks about suffering as a part of our existence, right? It's a part of our existence. And while we can work on alleviating it within ourselves, within those in our lives and within the world, to some degree, it will always exist. So it's something that we have to accept uh, to a certain degree and not let the suffering of others draw us in too much and take away from our own experience and get drawn into really what is other people's karma, right? So within oneness, there is the entire spectrum of experience. There is good experience. There is bad experience. There is wealth. There is poverty. There is pain. There is joy. There is all of these things. And that entire spectrum creates wholeness, Okay, so yes, we can work on cultivating the things that we want and avoiding the things that we don't want, but there are some amount of fluctuations that are inherent in life and there is, yeah, the full spectrum of, of experience that exists in, in this realm, in this physical realm. So when you see someone else suffering, keeping your heart open to, to help them, like he gives the example if somebody falls, you, you might help them get up, okay? But you're not going to all of a sudden change your entire life. You're not going to invest yourself so much that you're changing the course of, of what you need to do and taking on someone else's karma, right? So you're not going to change your entire life and invest so much of your energy that it depletes you, but you're also not going to laugh and walk by, okay? And completely ignore them because that's like sort of the other end of the spectrum of being like, oh, ha ha, suffering exists, nothing I can do about it, right? So the happy place is, the, the place of equanimity is somewhere in the middle where we get to witness suffering with some amount of open-heartedness, compassion, uh, the, the act of service, okay? Of helping to alleviate that suffering while also maintaining our own wholeness. The quote that I want, that I wanted to share from him says, you don't have a moral right to try to take away someone else's suffering. What you can be is an environment that is spacious enough where they can let go of their suffering if they are ready. So I think that this is a really beautiful quote and, and distinction of holding space rather than taking it upon yourself, taking on this hat of, I am, have the moral right and the moral obligation to alleviate somebody else of their suffering and of their experience. So that's that balance. And also from my own experience and also from listening to spiritual teachings, I have noticed the entanglement of my own ego in witnessing someone else's suffering, right? So that thing of like, I have to do something. I have to do something and it has to be the right thing. And what is the right thing for me to do? And then also noticing when it doesn't work, okay? When I'm not able to alleviate somebody else's suffering of noticing my own ego flare up and be like, hmm, why, why isn't it working? Why am I not good enough? Why am I not powerful enough to save this person, right? The, the savior complex. And, um, and so then it becomes more about me actually than the other person. So like that Ram Dass quote, quote says, becoming an environment that's spacious, that is compassionate, that is allowing, but is also detached, so spacious in somewhat of a detached way where you're just allowing and witnessing rather than gripping and holding on with your own ego and your own need to be right and to be powerful and to be the one who does the thing and alleviates the suffering and, and that whole thing. So um, I've definitely noticed this come up in many relationships throughout my life and, and some of them have persisted and some of them I have let go of because I've, I've ultimately noticed that, hmm, I'm not the one who is going to solve this. And so maybe in some cases my presence is still uh, supportive and worthy and valid. And in other cases, actually, I might be doing more harm than good. And I might be just there to fulfill my own ego. 
So, um, yeah, so holding that middle ground, that space of equanimity where you are open hearted, but you are still taking a step back, creating space and being somewhat detached. So I want to offer two mudra, actually, for our dropping in, for our meditation, for our breath today. One is Lotus Mudra. One is Padma Mudra. So if you bring your hands together and bloom the fingers open, this mudra can correspond to, to different things, one of which is the heart, one of which is a blooming open of the heart and spaciousness and expansiveness. So that's what I want to use it for today. Lotus Mudra, so keeping your heart open, blooming your heart open so that you are available to connect, so that you're available to feel both with yourself and with others. Um, and then the second mudra I want to offer is for protection. So this is called Svasti, Svasti Mudra. And you cross your forearms. The right forearm is closer to the chest. The left forearm is in front. Flex the wrists a little bit. And then you're making this X shape in front of your chest and pushing everything out, pushing negative energy out, pushing out anything that you may have taken on from somebody else's experience, okay? So you do not have to take on anyone else's karma. To a certain degree, we have a collective karma, right? The things that come up in somebody else and the things that come up in you are collectively held. They're threads that are woven through all of the physical world, all of society. So yes, it's not that you are completely uh, exempt from whatever it is and everybody has their own maze that they're working themselves through and you don't have to take on the weight, the heaviness and the details of somebody else's karma and somebody else's experience. So this mudra, I love this mudra. Whenever you're feeling like, Ugh, like get everybody get away from me or like you've taken on too much of somebody else's story and too much of their their weight invested yourself too much in whatever is going on so svasti mudra to protect yourself come back to your own energy your own path your own karma and lotus padma mudra to keep your heart open because we also want to make sure that we're doing that okay so let's let's start um Let's actually start with this one. Let's start with Svasti Mudra. So crossing the forearms, <sighs> coming back to your own center, <clears throat> noticing anything that you may have taken on from anyone in particular, from any community, from anyone in the world from the news, from any form of media, any suffering that you've taken on, any negativity that you've taken on, any stories that aren't yours, but that you may have absorbed. <sighs> nice deep breaths. And then let's release that mudra and just shake out your hands, your arms. <sighs> shake out anything that you can shake out. <sighs> and coming back to the heart, bringing the hands together, blooming the fingers open, holding this lotus shape in front of your heart center, Padma Mudra blooming your heart open. The heels of the hands are rooting down into the core of your being and the fingertips are expanding out to everything. So your heart interconnected with 
all hearts, the heart of the world, the heart of the universe. open to the interconnectedness of our experience, witnessing the love that runs through each of us, witnessing the various manifestations that exist, the different bodies and minds and experiences, the collective joy, the collective suffering, And keeping your heart open to that connectedness, to feeling for yourself and feeling for others. The balance of, in a heart-centered way, standing up for what you believe in, for what you want to create in the world, but also remaining whole and complete within yourself witnessing through the eyes of love. So it's not your job to fix everything. It's not your moral right or obligation. You are just spacious and open. <sighs> Letting the heart bloom open. And then you have the option of continuing to hold this mudra or you can come back to the first one or you can go in between them, svasti and padma. Svasti for protection, for clearing negative energy, clearing what you may have taken on and padma to bloom open. Coming to close in whatever shape, whatever mudra you like, whatever resonates. And bowing your head to your heart. Honoring your own capacity to feel. Your own power to both heal and hold space for healing. And practicing letting go of attachment to any timeline, to any need for a specific result. May we continue to be an environment in which those around us can let go of their suffering if they are ready. Hmm. Thank you so much for joining me. If you have any reflections, I'd love to hear them. I have one spot available for one-on-one -on -one coaching for transformation. If you're interested in working with me one-on-one -on -one for three or six months, please reach out. I'll also be relaunching my Live Your Yoga program in March. So if you're interested in that, there's some information on my link and you can reach out to me and book a free call to connect. Have a beautiful day. See you soon.